So in this video, I'm going to give you a new way to think about content creation. And if you can train yourself to think of this way, to internalize this process, it should not only make it easier for you to create content, but also make it a lot more bearable for you to continue your content creation and not burn out trying to have these one on one super big brand ideas that I know all of you guys are trying to have. And if you don't know who I am, my name is Corey. I'm a music marketer, co-founder of Country Brand Agency, a content consulting and music marketing agency that's worked with artists like 24K Golden, Macy Gray, Alexa Capelli, Tom the Mailman, and a bunch of other really dope artists. And my goal with this channel is to give you as much music marketing sauce as I can so that you can make your dreams into a reality. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the video. So I'm sure that today is no secret on just how important content is to a music artist and their growth. In fact, it's one of the last free ways to grow yourself if you know how to use it effectively. So that means that if you come up with a really dope content creation strategy, you can save money on running ads, you can save money on influencers, playlisting, all the marketing stuff that's going to take actual dollars out of your pocket. And, you know, content creation does have a little bit of a cost to it in the beginning. You got to buy things like ring lights and mics and a phone if you don't have a phone. But I'm going to assume that you have a phone because you're watching this video and probably on your phone. So if you at least have that, then you can start creating content. And a lot of artists have popped themselves off just off of a TikTok video or an Instagram video or a YouTube video or just some type of content that they've created. And a lot more artists are using content to stay in touch with their fans and keep them entertained and make them actually want to stick around for the next release that they have coming out. Now, one of the biggest issues that I see with artists and content creation is the ability to stay consistent with it and come up with different ideas. And I think that that has to do with one part that you guys are still viewing yourselves as music artists and not like content creators, even though I think that, you know, in 2022 and moving forward, those two terms are pretty much synonymous. If you decide to be a music artist today, you are effectively deciding to become a content creator. But the other thing that I think that plays a big part into it is that you guys just can't get out of your own head, right? Like you don't know how to think about content. You overthink when it comes to it. And then you end up just not doing anything, which is honestly the worst thing that you could do. You got to at least do something because if you don't take any at bats, how are you ever going to hit a home run, man? So what I want to do in this video is give you guys a way to think about content creation that I constantly use for like clients and people in my brand and network. And if you've been on one of those calls, you probably heard me say it before. But it's a way that I've come to think about content that's helped me as a content creator. And the advice when I've given it to artists have seen it to help them out as well. Right. So let's get into that. So what I want you to do is think about content in terms of two different boxes. Right. So there are two different boxes when it comes to your content creation. You have content that is meant to extend beyond your core fan base and pull new people back in. Right. This is content that is typically universally entertaining. This could be your music videos. It could be your freestyle videos, maybe a cover of a particular song. Right. This is content that could be enjoyable by someone, whether or not they know who you are. But now you have content that's in the second box and this content's goal isn't really to bring new people back in. But the goal of that content is to almost become sort of an inside joke to your current audience or give them new information about you or show them a different side of you or your lifestyle. And it's really meant to more so just engage those people and make them feel more like they know about you. Right. So these are things like your Instagram lives and your TikTok lives. These are things like your vlogs. Right. If I don't know who you are, then I don't care what you did today. But if I am a fan of you and I do know who you are, then I 100 percent care about what you did today. Right. So when you're thinking about your content creation, you need to think about it in terms of like which of these two boxes does it fit in and then judge it accordingly. So if you make a piece of content and you do want it to go outside of your core and bring the people back in, then you got to judge it accordingly. How many likes did it get? How many views did it get? How many followers did you get after you posted it? But if the goal of that content is really just to engage a current audience, then you can be a lot more lax on the performance of it. So let's say, for example, you go to the park and you hang out with your niece. and Y'all have a really dope day. Y'all go get ice cream and y'all ride scooters and maybe y'all go play some games. And you decide to document that and post that onto your Instagram feed. Now, you can't look at that piece of content and expect it to go viral and bring new people back in because who is that going to be entertaining to? Unless you do something like funny, you know what I'm saying? Or like your, your niece does something funny, then chances are it's really only going to be interesting to the people that already care about you and follow you. But key on what I just said, right? It's going to be interesting to the people that know about you, care about you, and already follow you. Because in that piece of clip, you've effectively shown your audience two different things. One, that you're a family person because they can see you hanging out with your niece 
and having family time with her, right? And two, that you live a life outside of just your music and it instantly makes you more relatable because now instead of becoming this, this studio content rap, rap to your audience, you are a human being. You're a person that likes to hang out with their family. So once again, when you're going into your content creation process, map out your content in terms of those two boxes. What are some things that you can create that will allow you to extend beyond your core fan base, provide entertainment value to people that don't know who you are, and allow you to be able to bring new people back into your audience based off of piquing their interest? And then what are some things that you can do? What is some content that you can create that can just further engage the audience that you already have, make them learn more about you, see more of your hobbies, your lifestyle, the things that you're into, and just make them overall feel like they're a little bit closer to you and, and you as a person, right? So there it is, guys. That's the way that I like to think about content creation is in correlation to that two box theory. Once again, you have your content that is meant to be universally entertaining so that it can spread beyond your core audience and bring new people back in. And then you have your content that isn't really meant to be universally entertaining, but it's meant to be more so of an engagement tool with your current audience. Teach them something new about you, invite them into your lifestyle and show them a different side of you. And once you get a grasp of these two concepts, it genuinely does make content creation a lot easier because in those two facets, almost anything can become content, right? So if you're hooping with your friends or you're playing Super Smash Bros with the homies, then that can become content because now you're not worried about if it's going to flop or not. You just know that, hey, I want to post this clip of me playing Super Smash Bros with my friends to show my audience that I'm in the gaming. I like to play video games. I have a funny side. I talk shit with my friends, right? Or maybe you want to post that clip of you hooping with your friends to show your audience that, hey, I like to hoop. I care about my health. I'm into working out. And you can just be a little bit more relaxed on the performance of it because as long as somebody watches that video and gets the messaging out of it that you want them to get out of it, i.e. those two things I just mentioned, then mission accomplished. You, you successfully um, posted the right content. But if you're making content with the goal of going outside of your audience and bringing new people back in, once again, that more universally entertaining content, then you have to judge it accordingly and you have to make changes that you see fit. So you have to look at the views. You have to look at the likes. You have to read through the comments. You have to look at how many followers did you get, how many streams did you go up after, and then make tweaks and make adjustments from there. But as long as you're able to make content in these two boxes, you'll be able to stay a lot more active and a lot more consistent with your content creation, which will lead you to bigger pop moments that you're looking for with your content creation. And now when you're planning out your content, you can just map out your formula based on those two things. Maybe one week you have 80%, you know, uh, content from the first box and you have 20% content from the second box. Maybe, you know, during your more general time, you're 50-50, right? And maybe one week you can't think of anything to post. So you go 100% content from the second boss. You can interchange it based on where you are in your current lifestyle and what you have to create and then just switch from there, you know, based on what you have to post. So other than that, if you feel like you learned anything today, please like this video and share it with one artist that you know needs to hear this advice. Share it with an artist that you know is in their head about content creation and just has an issue with staying consistent. And other than that, let me know what you thought about it in the comment section below. Which of these two boxes do you find yourself making content for more often? Which one do you feel like you have the most issues with? What is your biggest issue when it comes to content creation as an artist? Let me know all that in the comment section below, and I'll see if I can think of some stuff to help you guys out. Now, once again, my name is Corey, and I'll see y'all next time.